Welcome to the channel, my friend. I am Richard Genders, and I am the host of Genders Gaming. This is a channel where it's all about analog gaming. We're talking board games, miniature games, playthroughs, how to play, and so on. And the game I'm going to show you today, it's all about speed. Running as fast as you can and hopefully finish first. I'm going to show you Sonic Teams. This is a children game for seven years and above where you portray as one of the characters in the Sonic universe. You will go in teams of two trying to finish first and become the glorious winners. It's a two to four player game and it's around 20 minutes of gameplay. I'm going to show you how to set it up and I'm going to show you how to play it. So let's just take a look at it. This is the setup of the game. We put the board in the middle of the gaming area, we put the movement cards over here and the bonus cards here. On the starting field we put the little miniatures. These miniatures have different colors. We have the black team, the red team, yellow team and blue team. If this is a two player game, each player picks two team of different colors. Meaning that here, for example, we have the red and black team being controlled by one player and the yellow and blue team being controlled by the other player. If we are three players, each player simply pick one team and then we do not use the last team. But if we are four players, we make two teams with two players in each team. Each team then controls two different colors. So this game is about you controlling a team in the Sonic universe, trying to make your way across this field and finish in first with your team. If you get your team color over the finish line first, well, congratulations, you are the winner. In this game, the starting player is the youngest player. And then we simply go clockwise around the table. Each player starts with six movement cards on their hand. And as you can see here, there's all a bunch of different colors on these cards. Meaning that you won't just move your own team, you will also need to move the other teams around as well. Because you need to play all of these cards on your hands before you get new cards. Once you have played all these cards, you simply take six new cards from the deck. But how do you actually move? Well, if we, for example, are the yellow team, we could choose to play a yellow card. Up in the corners here, you can see a number. And this is the amount of numbers that we get to move our little miniature. But eventually, we will need to play the other team's colors as well. Meaning that we need to move that team with the amount stated in the upper corners. And that's the way you move in this game. It's quite easy, isn't it? I mean, you play a card, you look at the color, you look at the numbers, and then you move one miniature from that team. So if I play the black card here, I could choose to move this one up in the front, but I could also choose to move the one in the back. It's all up to you. And this mechanic gives this game quite a twist. That you do not only move your own team around, you also move the other teams. Because out on the boards, you have a bunch of different squares. And these squares, they can boost your speed, but they can also slow you down quite a lot. They can give you bonus cards and some other benefits. Let's take a look at this. If you land on the rings, you will double your movements during your next turn. Meaning that if you play a number one card during your next turn, you will now get to move two steps instead. If you end your movement on the spikes, your movements are reduced down to one during your next turn. And it doesn't matter how many moves you have on the card, it will still be one. And as you can see here, there's double squares on these fields. You got rings up here and spikes down here. And the player placing the miniature gets to choose where they want to place it. Meaning that if you are controlling an opponent's miniature, it might be wise for you to put them in the spikes. These fields looking like this are loops. 
meaning that if you end your movement on a loop, you need to go back to the next normal field. A character can only pass a loop in one go. They may not end their movement on it because then they will fall back. If you land on a square with the question mark, you get to draw one bonus card. When you or your teammate makes the move, you may also play out a bonus card. These can be played either if it's you making the move or it's your teammate. And these ones will give you a bunch of benefits. This card here will add one to your movements. If your character stops their movement on a loop and you do not want them to go back again, you can play this card right here, which will give them the benefits of moving to the next normal field. Then we have this one here. This is the super boost and this one will double your movement but you can only use this on a normal field. Meaning that if you stand on the spikes or rings or anything, you won't be able to use this one. You need to be on one of the normal grass fields. If you're standing on the spikes, you can play this shield here, which will protect you from the spike effect. And during your next turn, you will move as normal. Lastly, we got the super jump. This card must be played as soon as it's drawn from the draw pile. And this one will give you the ability to jump from the field you're at straight over to the next field with rings on them. Among the bonus cards, you also have this special card. This does not boost your movements in any way, but this means that if you pick it up, you need to throw it away immediately. And now each player needs to take one bonus card each. And that's how the game goes on. Each player takes their turn, plays their cards, use the bonus actions, move around the track, hopefully don't end up in the spike pit, and the team that managed to get both of their miniatures into the finish area first wins the game. Now, did I enjoy this game? Yeah, I did. This is a light, fast, easy children's game. And it should be light and it should be fast because kids has a little, little concentration span these days. I have played this with my kids that are 5 and 8 years old and they had no problems at all figuring out the rules, moving around the miniatures. And the whole mechanic where you can actually control the other teams as well, it's quite fun because you can in a quick and easy way mess up the plan completely for the other team. Which actually can be quite a challenge for you because you might have a plan but all of a sudden someone comes in and moves your little figure around putting it in a location where you do not want to be and your next turn is now completely broken. The color scheme and artwork in this game is light and bright and really fits good into the whole Sonic universe. The little miniatures here actually comes finished painted straight out of the box so you do not need to worry about you sitting down for hours and painting these minis. They're already painted when you get them. My kids really enjoyed the artwork a lot and the gameplay and had no problems at all figuring out how the game actually worked. They loved the little miniatures and they recognized all of them straight away. So if your kid is a fan of Sonic, well I can strongly recommend to try this game out. So there you have it my friend, that was Sonic Teams for you. A fast, easy game where you sit down and try to just get through the finish line first or hopefully mess up the other player's turns. It's a lot of fun, it's a fast gameplay, it's easy to learn. If your kids like Sonic, well, try this out, I think they're going to have a good time. My children sure did and I like to play it with them, so have a look at it if you want to. There will be links to the game down in the description, so check out that if you want to do that. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, throw in a comment for me there what you thought about it. If you like my channel, why not subscribe to it? It gives me a smile on my lips every time I get a new subscriber. And until next week, people, please remember to keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace.